Now we've done that with a bunch of height information. You can do the exact same thing with normal information. The only difference being, uh, we won't use a fill layer. We're gonna use a uh, paint layer. So we're gonna add a new paint layer here. And we'll go ahead and call this normal. So we're gonna zoom in a little bit and let's right click to go into our brush settings here. We're gonna turn off everything but our normal map here. So where that normal is, we can put different maps in here. If you go uh, over here to your tabs and you say hard surfaces, you can see a bunch of different normal options and there's you can actually modify some of these uh, as well. Uh, we'll go ahead and take this uh, bevel cross and we'll drop that into our normal for our brush. And now you're gonna see when we go to paint on this, let's go ahead and control right mouse click and then go all the way up to increase that hardness. So now we can go through here and we can stamp normal information. And again, you can right click, you can go through here and swap out any of these normals and then go back in here and start painting. So let's find some interesting ones, maybe this vent 18 here. And again, control and then left mouse click, you can change the direction of these vents. If I wanna put a vent in here and that height's kind of in the way, remember you just go back to your height, go back to that paint layer, hit X to go um, to change that to a black color and just paint that height right out of there. So if some of these are annoying you or getting in your way, you can go right through and paint them out. That's why I like using a paint layer because uh, you can stack stuff on top of them and have it interact with that paint layer and you can just go through and just repaint on that paint layer or you just delete it entirely. So let's hit X on our keyboard to go back to white. Let's go back to our normal paint layer. We'll right click again, we'll swap out another vent There we go. Now, you're gonna notice as I'm doing this, I'm not getting any edge information. You gotta do the exact same thing. Right click, add an anchor point. We'll call this normal, normal details. Go back up to anything you want to uh, see it, which is gonna be our metal edge wear. Go down here to micro normal, say normal details. Go up here, say micro normal to true and actually scroll down, there's one thing I forgot. Uh, the reference channel is going to be the normal channel. There we go. So now, you didn't have to do that on the micro height, but the micro normal detail, make sure your reference channel is uh, set to normal, not base color. So now it's gonna recognize uh, those edge scratches. So now let's go back to this normal, right click this, add a filter. Again, we'll choose the max, matte FX HBAO, Channel source is gonna be normal this time. Let's go back to our dirt mask here, our dirt generator. Our micro normal is gonna to point to our normal details. Scroll up, micro normal is set to true. And our reference channel is set to normal. So now wherever we stamp normal information, we're getting edge scratches and dirt. Pretty cool, so we'll go back to our Again, normal layer. I'm gonna add some places where I can add some emissive LEDs. So we're gonna right click in here. Let's change, choose maybe the circle bump. Or you know what, maybe this vent 20. Now if there's anything I don't like, just hit two on your keyboard and you can go through here and you can just paint out that previously stamped normal detail. All the edges and dirt's gonna go with it. And then I'll hit one to go back into my brush and then we can just continue stamping around. And again, all that dirt and edge scratching is gonna follow that normal, no problem. So now on top of everything like we did before, I'm gonna add a fill layer, we'll call this emissive. We only want the emissive to affect the color. Uh, you know what, this time we're gonna do color and roughness. The roughness, we don't want our emissive to be shiny, so we're gonna make it super matte. Uh, the emissive color, we'll switch again to kind of a uh, yellowish orange, and then we need an emissive channel, so we're actually gonna go back up to our texture settings. We're gonna say we need to add an emissive channel. So now, when we go back to our layers, we have their emissive layer selected. Turn on emissive channel now that we have available to us. Go down here to emissive, and we'll choose that. Now we need to control where this emissive is gonna go, so I'm gonna right click this emissive. And you know what? Let's add a, or a mask with color selection. Pick color, we'll pick the eyeballs, and we'll pick the little dots at the end here. And then on top of this, we're gonna add a paint. Hit X to go uh, turn this back to white. And then we're gonna go fill these little things in. 
with some emissive. Now, if you missed the part of the video where the emissive looks this good and this cool, all that's really being driven by is down here under our shader settings, we're playing around with this emissive intensity, as well as in our display settings, if you scroll down, we have activate post effects, and it's this glare that's doing the heavy lifting here. So you can kind of go through here and dial in and out uh, this luminance and then the threshold and the remap factor. So let's go ahead and turn off symmetry there. We've already got our scarab here. Now, if you want to take this into Marmoset and render this out in Marmoset, you already know how to do that. You can go file export, just watch the previous videos on that, shoot this over to Marmoset, set it up, do any Marmoset post effects or any rendering you want to do in Marmoset and you're good to go. Or you can hit tab, uh, capture all this with the post effects. Let's go ahead and maximize this window here. And you're good to uh, you know continue compositing this in Photoshop.